Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to a lesson I like to call the three keys to killer blues rock phrasing. And I love blues rock, whether it's 80s or 70s or 60s. Blues and rock together, it's like, I don't need donuts, so like ketchup and french fries. <laughs> They're just meant for each other. So check this out. The three keys, and I got to do this quick, just get this in a short package. One, you got to know the scale. So for sure, first step, memorize the pentatonic scale because nine times out of 10, that's what people use. Modes are great. Start with the pentatonic. Five notes is easier to learn than seven. <laughs> so you got to know what key you're into. So, you know, know that the song progression is an A. So we'll take A minor. We'll do a one, four, five blues progression. Two, you got to got to got to got to be able to see the chords all over the neck a way to do that is to learn the cage system i work out of the cage system don't use the whole thing to do lessons i use three chord shapes and i'll explain those in a minute but seeing the chords all over the neck is crucial to melodic solo playing not only that but it teaches you the notes you want to hit as the chord progression goes by three Super, super important is feel, right? Feels what connects us with music. It's the emotional connection with music. Good drummers laying it down. Even people that don't even like playing an instrument, they feel it. They're automatically like, yeah, I can feel that. They're, yeah, I can dance. Maybe not, but <laughs> you get the point. You are immediately connected emotionally and physically to the music. Okay, so feel is super important. Think blues players. B.B. King, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, ripping, you know, rock players, Van Halen, all these guys, they have the skill and the feel, okay? David Gilmour, don't have to be fast, incredible feel, okay? So, those are the three things. Scale, chords all over the neck, feel. Now, let's give concrete examples of what that is. So, scale. A minor, pentatonic. Learn all five positions. Not going to go over them here, but there's tons of awesome diagrams all over the internet to learn the five positions. Learn all five because they all have cool ways to approach the same thing, okay? In different spots. <laughs> So the inversions or knowing your chords all over the neck, what I'm gonna show you is inversions. And what that means is A minor, let's say, has three notes in it that are important. The root, the third, and the fifth. Now those three note clusters are all over the neck, but I'm gonna relate mine to shapes of open position chords. So if we took this one, if you look at these notes right here, it's just like an E minor chord in open position. I use this finger as kind of a capo and to be able to hit my root note here, but I take that shape, that E minor shape, and now that shape turns into an A chord because of what this finger is doing, right? Just like if I moved it up to here, I still have the E shape, but now my root note is D, I got a D minor chord, okay? That's one shape. Another shape is an A shape, and since we're in minor, think of an A minor chord, right? It looks like that. Exact same thing, right? Same premise. If I took my fingers and did this, and I had this three note cluster, right? But I want that to be D minor. I'm gonna use this finger and find on the A string a D note, do this exact same thing, scoot it up. Now I have a D minor but the shape is an a, a minor shape, okay? Same thing, move it up to, got my E minor chord, but that A shape. Same thing, think of a D, right? So we gotta use D minor in this instance. There's our D minor shape. If you wanna find the root of this chord, look for this finger. Your third finger on the B string, look for an A, say we want an A minor, look for the A note, which is right here. I scoot that whole shape up. Voila! Magic! <laughs> okay, now why that's important is then we can see where those chord shapes are within our pentatonic scale. So if I took positions one and two, 
right? And... <laughs> Within that space right there, I can use every single chord and find the notes I gotta hit by using one of those three inversions of those chords. A minor comes up, this is our one chord. Think of this, it's right over that first position pentatonic, so you can almost hit anything. Got a root, fifth, third, root, Fifth, third, root. So. Okay, sounds killer. I used one inversion. If I want to take that A chord and do it in position two, I use the D shape and it's right here. See if this notes, this cluster sounds familiar. Okay. <laughs> it's right there. Okay, so while that whole, why that whole thing works is if you look at the notes, right, you got your A, your C, and your E. When I do this, I'm bending to E, which is in the chord. Okay, when I do this, this is... So, I'm hitting the notes of the chord right there, okay? I fit all three. Now, <clears throat> if I can do that, so I've seen two shapes of the A. Here, the E shape, and the D shape, in those two positions. Now, our other two chords, this is the A shape. Again, we're right in that first position of pentatonic. Right? So I'm going, right, because I have those notes. If I use this note, you notice it's not in the pentatonic scale. This is where one of the notes of the minor scale comes from. I can use it. If you don't know who Gary Moore is, please go look him up and do the blues playing. I mean, his 80s playing is ripping, but his blues playing, sick. <laughs> okay, so a little side note, a little tidbit, a little goodness, right? Okay, so we haven't even moved out of position one, but we have all of our notes that we need to hit. Back to our A note. Watch, we can resolve. So we went... We need to get to our A. I didn't even move because I hit the root, the third, bent up to my E note, right? The fifth. And then went back to my root. I hit all three notes of my chords right there. Because I can see those inversions, right? I know exactly where to go. Now, when I go to E minor, I have two E minors really close to me. I have this A shaped one, okay? Which is in position two. Another note out of the minor scale, right? But I also have this one right here. So there's two options. I can go down or up, because sometimes you don't always want to play high and you want to go lower. Back to my D. Back to my A. Back to my E for the five chord. Resolve. Now I'm literally just hitting the notes of the chords right there. And it's 
training your brain to think not so much as the scale. You got to use the scale. That's your map. But the chords are the target notes or the destination. That's what it's all about. Seeing those chords within the shape. Okay. So once you got that and, and look at it this way, I'll go over this really quickly. We can't uh, do them all, but check it out. So we have, right? One, four, five right there, okay? So we hit in positions one and two, all of our chords in the one, four, five. If we go to shapes two and three, we have A minor, one chord, okay? Still in shape two of the pentatonic scale. We have our D which is in position three, D minor, our E shape. And our four or five chord rather, the E chord is right there, also in position two. So you got. Right, we got our D. Right there. So if we went to position three and four, we have the A minor chord here. Our D minor shape is right there. Back to our A minor. And then our E is right here. And then here. So that's how they all fit, right? You have, I had three inversions of each chord at my fingertips and I could find the one, four, five within two positions of the pentatonic scale. Each position had one of those three inversions of each of those chords right underneath my fingertips. And that is magic <laughs> because you stop fumbling around wishing you could hit the notes to knowing where the notes are. So the chords within the scales is Eureka. Okay. Now feel that takes some work, but I'll give you a couple tips. Bending, vibrato and timing. Okay. So bending, obviously, right? Take the bends and think of bends, not just bending. So you're not randomly bending notes. Think of those inversions again and how you can bend a string into one of those inversions, okay? Right, when we bent there, we bent into our five chord. We also have the E note in this chord too. But remember I was saying it's kind of one of those transitional ones. So you can pick another note, a third or a root to bend to, that would be great. So you could take this note right here. You're bending to the root, okay, in position one. Now, bends are great because you can do them really fast. No vibrato, you can do them fast with vibrato. You can bend, hold the note, add vibrato, a la David Gilmore all the time. You can bend super slowly. Take your time like you're with a lady or a lady's like you're with your man. Right? It's sexy bend. <laughs> Reverse bends, super cool. You bend up to the note and go down like this. And if you do it multiple times and go a little lower each time, very cool effect. Helps if you make an ugly face, like lemon juice face, like like watch Stevie Ray Vaughan, just ugly faces, but he means it. Okay, so you got. 
Now, when you come down, you know, vibrato can be on a bent note, but it can also be on a stationary note. Now, I like to use my hand to do the vibrato, not my finger. So you get a rocking motion with your hand, like think of a pendulum. And I'm pulling or pushing, right? And I'm using this pivot motion rather than this because you're gonna have more strength. And if you use your other fingers to help you, awesome. But if you're doing one finger vibrato, it's especially awesome to keep your fingers stiff and use this motion of your hand to help you out, okay? So you can do that, right? Quick bend, slow, vibrato. Come down, do reverse bend. Stationary vibrato. And then the timing, right? So timing could be taking the same four notes and manipulating it so you can use the same four notes, but it sounds different, okay? So like instead of going, right? You can be like, a couple times or right so you can do the timing difference which is great on its own or add the little bends which I haven't gone over yet but like just the little tugs. Like those little tiny ones, not a half step or a whole step, more like a quarter note. Right? So if you add those with the vibrato and the bends, vibrato. with the timing it's the same notes it's just a quick hammer on and pull off right you can add more feel here using palm muted you can rake raking is done by you really heavily mute the strings until you get to the note that you want to ring out Outside my four note cluster, but I played the same notes, so don't forget about the octaves. <laughs> that right there is complete magic, too, because you can use the same four notes, play the octaves, sounds different. <laughs> Same four notes, mixed them up with timing, vibrato, voila, completely different. Again, same notes. Added some pinch harmonics, little tugs. So it's just those three things. That's all I did right there. Now, of course, I've been playing a while, so it helps. But if you're starting out and you learn these right off the bat, it will save you 10 years of trying to figure stuff out. If you've been playing for a long time and you've got the technique, you're halfway there. You're more than that. You're three quarters of the way there because you got the technique. You can move around. You can probably already bend. You can probably do vibrato. The missing element for you is seeing the chord shapes inside the scale. I promise you, and I always go over this, but I really try to stress the importance. This literally was like magic 
for me. When I, and I've been playing 20 years before I did this. And I was like, how did I miss that? I saw a lesson on the caged system. And I was like, uh, uh, I was speechless. Good thing I wasn't guitarless. Because <laughs> I immediately, it was like a lightning bolt. And I was like, wow. And then when I started teaching it, it was so much easier to tell people. Because you know, they're always like, how do you become melodic? Right there. That shows you how to become melodic because those are the notes of the chords in the progression. And it's how you apply those notes over the progression as those chords go by that make the melodies. Now, you don't always have to hit the notes of that chord as it's going by, but it sure is awesome when you can do a rip and run or just moving around and then the last minute, bam, you hit one of those magical notes. It's that connection. And see, I was spitting. I was feeling it so much. I just like, <laughs> luckily it didn't hit the lens, but <laughs> that's how powerful it is. I promise you it will work. It is magic. You'll get a hallelujah. You'll love it. Your neighbors will love it because you'll start to sound like you're making melody. The blues gigs will be great. Anything, any gig, whatever. Just connect, connect, feel. Don't forget the feel. Feel is huge, really Go slow, connect with your instrument. Feel it, feel that note, just dig, dig. <laughs> Catch you later.